Hey everyone, I'm Andy Asher. I'm the editor at Bloomer Boomer. So my guest today is someone I know and who I have worked with, and she is an amazing writer who has built a good livelihood writing from her rural home in Missouri. So I invited her to be on the show today because I knew we would learn something interesting. She is Darla Noble. Thanks so much for being here, Darla. Thanks for asking, Andy. I'm, I'm really excited to be here with you. Well, so am I. And I know that uh, you are a writer and I yes. know you uh, write books of us. Uh, uh, you know, when someone says that they're a writer, we conjure up a certain uh, set of skills and education and a work record that defines what it means to be a writer. But, but since then, I've discovered that there are all different kinds of writers such, uh, with all different skill sets and backgrounds. Uh, do you know what I mean? Most definitely. Um, as far as my work is concerned, I write what I know. I, I am nonfiction. Um, in the curriculum aspect, I do do some fiction, um, children's stories to bring home points or to um, for English and grammar lessons and that sort of thing. Character education, I do um, some fiction for kids as far as that goes. But, uh, you know, to sit down and write a book, like a fiction book, like a novel, a mystery, a cozy mystery, a love story or something like that, that would definitely not be me. Um, I want I want to take away from, from whatever I read um, and whatever I write. I want people to be able to take something and useful and meaningful and relevant that they can apply to their lives. It dovetails into what I would ask you here. There are many types of writing and not everyone can do it all. There's, Correct. There's, of course, copywriting, there's article writing, there's blogs, mm -hmm. there's fiction, there's nonfiction. How does one right. decide their niche and is a niche important? Okay, I'll answer those questions in reverse. Yes, it's very important. Um, it's kind of like that old thing, you that old saying where you can do a lot of things a little bit well, or you can do a few things really well, and and that is what I tend to focus on. I I know that. Um, I am a storyteller, okay? And so people say, well, yeah, you are a storyteller because I do a lot of speaking, um, public speaking as well. And, and they'll say, you tell a great story. But none of the stories I tell are fictional. They're all actual things. They're all true. They, and they're all told to make a point, to drive something home, to teach a lesson. And so just to write a book just for the sake of telling a story, you know, I couldn't do it. I mean, you know, that's that's just plain and simple. I couldn't do it. Um, but there are a lot of people out there that do, and a lot of people out there that love to read those type of things. Um, but as far as finding your niche, you got to write what's inside you. You got to write from your heart. And, and right. Yeah. And I wonder if um, I wonder if everyone understands the the huge demand for writing and content today. There is such a thing as as information overload so you know so you have to be very careful about um about what you read about what you write um you know from my aspect i i am very careful about what i write as far as it being um as far as specifying whether it's factual whether it is um whether it's going to be useful um, to a lot of people or or just a few, you know, and, and that is how I, I choose my markets or choose where I distribute or how I distribute what I write, um, you know, because I want it to have the, the most impact that it can. But, um, you know, and with my books as far as like, and that gets into the marketing of your content, marketing my books, marketing, uh, you know, of my online content or how I market myself as a ghostwriter. You know, you have to, you have to realize that what you do and what you want to write is not going to appeal to everyone. And so, you know, you have to be mindful of that. So what other advice do you have as to where to go to find those jobs? Well, um, just online searches, and I won't plug any one in particular site, um, you know, because, I mean, unless you, you want me to do that, I will, but, um, but be careful because, and read the fine print, um, don't, 
don't assume that um, that just because they're advertising online that they are legitimate, that they are um, working for you and with you. Um, you know, take the time to study and um, and don't get discouraged. Don't take the first thing you see. Um, you know, weigh your options. How can you? Uh, how can someone start to focus themselves on on where they stand and and how they should uh, look at themselves and in, in getting into this? Okay. Um, first of all, no, you you don't have to have a degree in grammar or English or journalism um, to be a writer. You you don't. Um, but at the same time, you do need to be professional. Okay, you do need to to have a high level of professionalism um, and and make yourself your your own biggest critic. Okay, uh, take the time to to polish your work and to make sure that it's that it's something that you know that that needs to be out there that that you can be proud of that um, you know I've I've seen people put stuff out there that you know my my six-year-old grandchildren could do a better job of you know you don't you don't want to do that because maybe the comp great but the presentation the the grammar the spelling you know it's just it's just bad okay you know and so so anything worth doing is worth doing right okay so so take the time to do it well there are a lot of helps out there um you know your your laptop will have a lot of helps with as far as grammar and spelling and things like that don't depend solely on that though because it's it's a machine okay and it doesn't do it all well um and it doesn't do it all correctly um depending on the um you know the the inferences that you're making or you know sometimes when you're when you're doing slang or something like that you know so so you need to be careful um you need just you just have to have a series of you know of things to check and recheck your work um take the time to know your copyright laws okay take the time to protect your work okay take the time to protect your work so that it doesn't become someone else's um, I've had a couple of instances, one very innocent instance, and when someone um, took my work and and submitted it to another publication, it was it was a very innocent mistake on this gentleman's part, um, and I was more than happy to let him to let him use it. Okay. Um, once the publication notified me and told me what the situation was. I had no problem with it. Um, another instance, um, I sent an example of my work to a prospective client and um, they turned around and used it for their own. And that, that was not such a good thing. So take the time um, for them, I might add. Um, yeah. Take the time to, to protect your work, okay? Take the time to know to know the rules and play by the rules. Who 27, 28 years ago when I started this, what I basically gave away for very little money, it just almost makes me cringe. <laughs> but at the same time, it got my foot in the door. And it led to more clients and more clients and a a stellar reputation as um, as someone who is professional and who has integrity and who has skill and who um, is you know I I have a I have a, a, a solid and um, excellent reputation as a freelancer as a ghostwriter as an author and speaker and it didn't come overnight um, but you know so so yeah maybe i gave a little bit away um for a lot cheaper than i should have but i didn't really because it got me to where i am today i also have another book coming out in september um, called please pass the memories and that is a book that would be great for bloomer boomers because it is a 
It is a book that for grandparents especially um, to teach them how to connect to the multi-generations in their family, um, their grandkids, their kids, their grandkids, their great grandkids, how to connect with them through stories, through cooking, through games, through conversation, through social media, through um, family keepsakes, and even through that awful dreaded word, um, traditions and family reunions and that sort of thing. So that'll be out in September and I've got um, a lot of um, speaking engagements already lined up to um, for um, grandparents groups for just different things um, to kick that off and to help get them started on those type of things. So. Well, we're going to include some links there and I'll give you that in just a minute. Uh, it's been great, Darla. We've been talking to Darla. Thank you. Well, well, thanks so much. Oh, thank you, Andy. Thanks for having me. And um, and anybody who's listening who looks at the website, um, just take all this to heart and just go with what is you know, what you're passionate about, you can do it. Oh, very good. Well, you can find out more about her books and uh, and what Darla is up to. Uh, and right now, if you go to bloomerboomer.com and then slash now, bloomerboomer.com slash now, where you can get hold of uh, all of that right away. And there are Kindle and paperback versions. All yes. Well, good. If you want to check out anything else, go to bloomerboomer.com. Take care and we'll see you here next time.